Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Jimmy Curve Podcast. I am your host, Jimmy Putnam. This is the Jimmy Curve, the show where Lincoln comedians lament their lives. Uh, with, <laughs> with me, is that a I, accurate, accurate or no? Jimmy Putnam makes you sad. <laughs> accurate or no? With me are my co-hosts. Will Doherty, go ahead and take that drink of water if you want. The cute one. <laughs> and Joshua Vossler. Hello, everybody. And this is our show. Uh, sitting in with us is a very special guest that I said I was going to introduce later. I mean, well, special guest is probably now. fine. Yeah. And, you know, I I said I was going to introduce him later, but he's staring at me uncomfortably. Yeah. It is Brad Stewart. Hey, ladies how's it going? Yay! Second cutest one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, let's get right into it. Uh, first off, we need to plug some things. So, uh, Will, you've got a show coming up this Saturday. I refuse to plug anything until I hear the plug drop. Oh, that's that's definitely going to happen. <laughs> it's your plug. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right, well, thanks for asking, Jimmy. Uh, I actually do have a show coming up this weekend. Uh, I'm going to be at the back line in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, I'm going to be doing a little show called Will Doherty Loves Company. Uh, and who's all on that show? Oh, God, I don't remember, and now you're embarrassing Sp me. No, but specifically... Uh, well, there's at least uh, one person who me. started this conversation. <laughs> me, Will. I'm right. on that show. <laughs> I'm on that show. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy Putnam managed to bully his way onto the Will Doherty <laughs> Loves Company show. I don't care who else is on it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. All right. So that was you. It's and your plug. All right. Second of all, uh, our good friend Ryan Dowd would like us to plug uh, his friends in Salt Lake City's podcast called Grumble Mountain. It is hosted by comedians Christian Piper, Arthur Carter, and Cody Eden. Follow them at Grumble Mountain on Twitter. That's at G-R-U-M-B-L-E-M-O-U-N-T-A-I-N on Twitter. It's your multiple drops <laughs> uh, also be sure to follow the Jimmy Curve on Twitter at the Jimmy Curve like us on Facebook send us an email at the Jimmy Curve at gmail.com we would love to plug anything you got you don't have to send us money just hit us give us a retweet on Twitter if you want to help the show and promote us anything else guys no I mean, I mean, that was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty excited about it. I felt pretty good about that plug segment. I don't know, if, I don't know about you guys. Is it good for you? Is it good for you? Uh, let's talk to our guest, Brad Stewart. How you doing? I'm good, thanks. All right. Uh, and Brad runs two reoccurring comedy yeah, shows? Yeah, once a week here in Lincoln, the, the Zoo Bar, the Zoolaria show at the do at the Zoo Bar. That's every Sunday at 8. And then I do a show once a month at the Backline where Will's going to be this weekend. Um, I do a show there called New Stuff where I have a bunch of comics that I love just come and try out their best new material. So it's always a really oh, fun show. Only comics that you love? Yep. Oh, good. Because I, I was on that too. So I feel really good. <laughs> <laughs> I feel really good. All of you guys were, weren't you? I haven't been on New oh, Stuff so yet. Oh, so, see. Yes. The only comics that I love. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll be on. I, I, I guess I had. You, uh, you asked me once, but I couldn't do it. Okay. I had you and Corey. I had all the former Uproot guys on a show once. Yeah, we should. Uh, have we talked about uproot on this podcast? No, not really. Do you uproot's want uproot's been uprooted li <laughs> <Yeah>. literally? <laughs> I heard a rumor that uproot may rise again, like um, the phoenix. Yes, there <laughs> there is some a little bit of noise. A little <laughs> bit of noise. <laughs> noise. Yeah, it's, Cor it's just Corey Brewer it, farting. It's basically <laughs> just Co yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it is 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 mostly Corey. You know, wants to get the band back together. Yeah. Just, just to get him out of his janitorial gig, or just... I, I, you know, I just think because we like doing it. Yeah. All right, yeah, it's fun. I went to a show last night at the lead singer Ani DeFranco. Does anybody know her? Oh, fantastic! She's awesome. I love Ani DeFranco, and I hadn't seen her since like '97, like in downtown LA. You have to be like in the right mood to enjoy Ani DeFranco. I find yeah. like you can't be like you wouldn't want to listen to Ani DeFranco to get pumped up for a drag race or <laughs> something. <laughs> well, she has a few that she that she brocks out. No, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Um, but it was the sound at the lead center wasn't that great. And I've heard other people say that too for bands and stuff. Yeah, I, I saw, saw Corey there. Like <laughs> it is Janet. Was outfit. it Corey's fault yeah. that the sound was <laughs> no, bad? No, not Corey's at all. I saw Wynn Marsalis there. Yeah, he's a big, 
big, huge, full, you know, full band there. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, w- I, I was expecting it to sound different. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know why. It, well, Ali DeFranco, she's like a singer songwriter, and her voice and her lyrics are really important and, and, and like part of her whole thing. So like, if her vocals aren't brought out enough, it just sucks. It doesn't work. Uh, would you say that Ani DeFranco is the poor man's Tori Amos? Uh, no, I would. Would you say uh, that? Uh, would you? <laughs> I wouldn't would, say that at all. Would you, would you say that Ani DeFranco is an alternate I think universe? The poor man's Tori Amos is Tori Amos <laughs> okay. right now. <laughs> right, right. I just I, I, I say that because no, go ahead. Or her sister th- Lori Amos. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think Tori Amos is the uninformed man's Ani DeFranco, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. I would, I, I, I only say that because Ani DeFranco is one of those artists to me who never sort of got as popular as I thought well, I she was going to. That, yeah, I mean, me either. But I mean, it was she, just she, too good sometimes. She did it all her own way. I mean, she yeah. makes just as money, as much money as some so, uh, as a big pop star because she has her own record label. She puts out her own music. I haven't seen her, her pace though, so I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure she makes damn good money because she started her own record label and she has a lot of fans. She played the lead center. It's big, you know. Like yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess that's true. I don't know, like I don't know how it breaks down for bands anymore. Like I don't know how bands make money. It's so different than what it used to be. Totally merch. Yeah, I was gonna say my understanding is that bands make money selling T shirts. Yeah. Just like comedians. (laughs) (laughs) Is that how comedians make money? Comedians comedians used to make money from holding the road that's been doing it for a while, they'll always have merch and it'll be like some fucking dumb joke from their act usually. (laughs) Right. Yeah. <laughs> Specifically written for that, for like this will be good on a T-shirt, and then when people did, are like, "Give me two of them." When you I did, when this, I did, Clash. it works like fucking perfect. Like they make like more than they make doing the show sometimes on merch. Yeah, I've seen. Yeah, I, I mean, I did Clash of the Comics, and the headliner for that night came with a whole bunch of shirts, you know, joke related shirts. Yeah. I didn't see him sell any. They're not always dumb. Sometimes they're clever. Uh, know, yeah, they were actually I mean, pretty sometimes clever. Sometimes you could just tell that it was just like, I need uh, something for a t-shirt. Yeah. But it works, you know? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> they, they sell. People love t-shirts. Well, I bought, I'm wearing an Ani DeFranco t-shirt I bought <laughs> last night. <laughs> <laughs> you know that. Uh, I, oh, I, yeah, I don't have a lot of variety in the t-shirts I wear, yeah. so I, I can't, of all the discussions I could weigh in on, t-shirt vari- variety is not one of them <laughs> that I would know a lot about. Speaking of, uh, I'm donating a lot of my fat guy shirts to Will, <laughs> so w- if Will compliment him, he's going to look a little snazzier, I yeah. think, because none of them are t-shirts, they're like button-up collared shirts, and I've never seen Will in a collared <laughs> shirt. <laughs> I'm going to have to retire my joke where I say, like, I didn't wear a shirt with buttons to my sister's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> are, are, Is that true? <laughs> what is you, you, wore, you just wore your Pickleman shirt? <laughs> I've I, <laughs> I've done fucking, that. fucking, like, stains on it. <laughs> I've done I that, I made it, too. didn't I? <laughs> I? I wore... I actually wore cargo shorts to the last wedding I went to. But it doesn't surprise me. In my defense, it was outside in July. Yeah, like, that's fuck you. <laughs> you have your wedding outside in July. I'm not. That's that's mean. That's mean to your guests. <laughs> Why would you do that? That makes no sense to me. Who who plans a wedding and they go so that you can experience your love and the majesty of nature, Jimmy? Yeah, I have allergies though, so that sucks. <laughs> There's no majesty. I have hay fever and like it's hot. It's like a it was. Hot outside, so I, you know. Oh, it's my phone. <laughs> Mike, Mike Go, get, get that, that up. up on the mic there. That, <laughs> it's just, I mean, you know, it's not like we're trying to be professional. Right. I think Brad Stewart, <laughs> Brad, as the closest thing I know to a professional comedian. This is so sad. <laughs> you're the one who didn't silence his phone yeah. at the beginning of this uh, this podcast. This is where you return the compliment and say, you are the closest thing I've seen to a professional podcast. You're the closest thing I've seen, like maybe the third, fourth <laughs> closest thing <laughs> I've seen liar. to a podcast. You're not, we're not in the top ten. <laughs> I would like to point out that I did not silence my phone. I just don't have any friends or contacts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's going to get one of the... Well, Dorothy makes you sad. Yeah, that, gets, that gets one of those. <laughs> uh, so, uh, let's just, speaking of famous touring comedians uh brad the most notable thing about you from what i hear from me personally, from you personally yeah. uh you open up i would say half of your sets 
announcing that you used to open for Joan Rivers. Yeah. <laughs> which is a big deal. Uh, and she recently passed away. So uh, I thought maybe people would like to hear you talk about her for a minute. Sure. Um, is that a weird way to phrase that question? Not. I don't know how to interview people. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> yes, Jimmy. You're... It's a weird way to phrase the question. <laughs> <laughs> Your former boss died. You d- work, Joan Rivers, you do stuff with her. Do you like have fun with that? Please <laughs> well, well, explain. The, the re- She's dead. <laughs> the reason I made it kind of awkward there right. is because... Even though Joan Rivers is fantastically famous, uh, and I understand how important she is, I really don't know a lot about her. Like I have not. Familiar well, I didn't with either. It. Before I started open for, her, I didn't really. I knew yeah. about you know the Tonight Show that she was. She was like a guest host for Johnny Carson, and I remember her as Dot Matrix, the voice of Dot Matrix in Spaceballs. Fantastic! Everybody remembers that, don't you? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, her that distinctive voice. You mm-hmm. know, like yeah. I respected her before I met her, but I didn't know about her stand-up background. Like, how did you get hooked up with that gig? Uh, my ex girlfriend worked at the agency that that represented Joan, and at the last minute, Joan needed an opening act for like three shows that were coming up in the Midwest. And so my girlfriend goes, "Send me your clips, so I'll send it over to Joan's and her people, and she'll watch them and see what." You know, they watched them and liked me, and then hired me, and then I got along great with her and her assistant too. Her assistant was a really cool guy, and they just kept hiring me after that. Yeah, I watched that documentary on Netflix. Yeah, that yeah. came out right after right before I started opening for. Her. Yeah, she had, and then talked I don't know what happened. They had a falling out with her and her that assistant, that guy. She says I not said how close she was with him and then No, like, that was her manager. Her oh, that was her manager. manager. Yeah. Okay, not her assistant. All right. Well, that was a good that was a good documentary. <laughs> it was awesome yeah. documentary. I mean, more people should have watched it. It should have been nominated. Yeah, it was good. Like even if you didn't like comedy or didn't like it didn't know anything about Joan Rivers. It was just a good yeah. show. Like you learned a lot about her. But yeah, I do always <laughs> mention that quite often on stage because I have material about it, you know. And I'm only going to do it for so long. I might think of some more stuff. Well, that's but, all right. Like if I, <laughs> but, you know, I, if I had opened for Joan Rivers, I would. I not, mean, it's sincere I would just stuff mi- that yeah. I still like talking about, so I still talk about it. You know, well, I make fun of myself that I, I, you know, I, the, the, I drop that name a lot. It's okay. I wish anyone, my name is Brad Stewart. I opened for Joan Rivers one time. <laughs> a lot of times people don't give a shit. They're like, what? It's okay. Like, I never forget. I was at Supercuts the week before I was opening for Joan at the Holland Center in Omaha. Which was like, I was like, that's a pretty big deal. My family gets to come. I was really, you know, feeling pretty good about myself. And I was I was still going to Supercuts to get my hair cut. But <laughs> and, she was make, <laughs> and the, uh, the lady was making small talk with me. And she goes, so you got any uh, big plans this weekend? And normally, like when you're getting your hair cut, I just like I'll be like, no, not really, or nothing, not, not much. Yeah, my my goal like, is always as to a avoid. matter of fact, I'm opening for Joan Rivers at the Holland Center in Omaha. She goes, oh, all right. So do you want a number two? Is that what you said on the side? <laughs> I'm like fuck you. You're not impressed with my life, Supercut Girl. Yeah. <laughs> that, I if I had opened for Joan Rivers, I would always lead with that. When I <laughs> when I played in a band in college. My claim to fame for like six years was one time we opened for Veruca Salt. That's which, cool. I like Veruca Salt. <laughs> yeah, no one knows who they See are anymore. There. But, yeah, <laughs> Volcano Girls. Yeah. Uh, the guitarist was hot as hell too. It, it, it was a weird. It was like we were play, we played out in this like field that uh, some college had, was throwing. You know, one of their college summer day festival things, and they brought in Veruca Salt, and then like. I went to high school with the guy who was organizing it, so he brought us. You know, I, I played in a ska band, so yeah. <laughs> Ver- Veruca Salt could not keep enough distance between them and us. Like we really? never saw them. I mean, there was a wall of people between us, and like they they had a trailer that they what, basically. What was the name of your band, Augustus Gloop? What? <laughs> what is that? That's the other character in Willy Wonka. The oh, Potter. right, because Veruca Salt. Okay, Augustus Gloop. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I'm with you. Uh, no, that was not the name. <laughs> Two Thousand Yards Out was the, was the name of that band. But like, yeah, they they like ran out of their trailer, ran up on stage, did a like a 32 minute set, and got out of there. Yeah. And you know, there was no autographs. Were they? Bi- no. Were they- kind of famous at that point and they had their song they had a video on mtv a lot in the early i mean 90s. this is not yeah they you guys remember that band veruca salt no, no. <laughs> <laughs> i see yeah i'm we're a little bit older than these two so probably about old enough to know who veruca yeah. salt is yeah. well they no, i've heard, just, I've I heard just of them don't know music at all yeah. except right. for like the shitty radio music i have <laughs> no choice but to listen to all right 
Well, that makes sense since you were doing a music segment on tonight's <laughs> podcast. <laughs> the, the thing about Joan Rivers is, uh, I, I, I wish I could just see her funeral because I guess it was pretty good. Like, oh, I would have loved to have I, gone. I yeah, couldn't afford to go to New York. but it was... H- Howard Stern uh, and her are really close. And he'd have her on a show. Because she was that. honest. That's why he liked yeah. having her on. They loved he, each he other. He could ask her any questions. Right. You know, and she would answer them honestly. And Joan's daughter asked him to to actually say something, which he dreads doing. But if he, he said, Joan's vagina is so dry. Yeah, it, it was referenced to like <laughs> her joke. Which her is, joke that she, she said She gets in the bathtub show. and all the water goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not too many funerals where you yeah. got dry vagina jokes. Right. You and, know? They, and they were in a synagogue. You right. Know, like, <laughs> yeah. With a rabbi, like, right there. I like, guess it was pretty th- pretty heartfelt, though. I guess it was a good speech overall. Yeah. yeah. That's what she was all about. I mean, she was, like, a lot of people judged her harshly because she was, you know, she was a comedian, you know. She fucking made fun of people. That's what a lot of comedians do. That was her style. At a certain point of fame, that happens to most comedians. It was like say. Don Rickles, you know. That's the same thing he does, but she's she. But she was just way more like. Yeah. She always said, "I talk to the audience like I talk to my my good friends." Right. Like I wouldn't censor myself around them, and I won't censor myself around an audience. No, and when she's, I mean, she's older. She was actually it seemed like almost she was dirtier. Yeah, like she got dirtier she as the older she got. Like in that documentary, she's saying jokes. It's like, wow, she's the dirtiest jokes you can <laughs> think of coming out of this eighty-some-year-old lady. You yeah. know, she was only eighty-one. Well, at a certain point, you <laughs> stop caring. <laughs> 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 yeah. What am I, What am I trying to defend now? I don't know. Uh, so, what was it? What was, What was it like opening for? I mean, was it? Were, was that a better audience or a or a more judgmental audience. It was an awesome audience. It was like the best thing ever in my life, ever. <laughs> <laughs> and I wish I could do it still. Even like I, I opened for her, but it was probably a little over a year since before from the last time I opened for her and when she passed away. I mean, if nothing um, else, you're probably in theaters with people yeah, who are yeah, paying attention. Like theaters, you're not in bars, you know, like fifteen hundred, two thousand, yeah. sometimes close to three thousand people in these huge theaters. It's what you dream of as a comedian, like this big audience and. And it went great. Like it also because she introduced me, you know. Yeah. Like she gets it as a comic. Like she got it. Like she was really respectful, and she wouldn't start the show until everybody was in their seats for me. Wow. Like a lot of headliners won't. They'll just say whatever. They can go out there, get them warmed up. People are still taking their seats and talking or whatever, and she wouldn't start it until everybody was sitting down and ready. And then she would say, like, "Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an evening of comedy and comedy." With Mr. Brad Stewart, Miss Joan Rivers, and then the blah blah. Then she would say a name of the band, like just make up a name, just just like she made the band like her foil on stage. Nice. <laughs> and there were always local musicians that she hired. <laughs> yeah. that were all super nice and stoked to be doing it. But she would say like you know like we we were playing in Iowa, and she said, "What's the what's college football teams you guys hate? What you know?" And someone said, "Oh, the Huskers." She goes, "Okay." So she call, she called him the Brad, Brad Stewart, Joan Rivers, and the Nebraska Cornhusker Marching Band. <laughs> <laughs> People were like, "Ooh, <laughs> nice!" And that time after John Travolta, remember they was in the news for like he was like soliciting for a happy ending yeah, at a yeah. at end of a male <laughs> massage. Yeah. And uh, so right after that, that was in the news. Like just a, it had only been a couple days when that came out, and she called the band the John Travolta Happy Ending Orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. But she would always say, well, please, well, she wouldn't call, send me out. She would say, please welcome the best opening act at his price range, <laughs> Brad Stewart. That's good. Except that one, uh, I always tell this part, because when my dad passed away, she introduced me as, please welcome Dean Stewart's son, Brad Stewart. <laughs> you know, which was amazing yeah. like for her to do that. Yeah. Oh, that's, I, I, I love hearing stories about celebrities who are sort of cool and get it because ninety yeah. percent of the stories you hear about celebrities from people who've met them are about what a dick they are. Right? Like, weren't you, like were, you were saying something last night uh, about because Dave Chappelle was in town doing a show and you were saying that you'd like heard good things about him too and like how yeah. he acted at open mics and around people and sort of. Well, yeah, because he'll show up and he'll be like, uh, "Hey, man, cool if I go on." Like someone's gonna go, fuck no, we got too many tonight. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Sorry, Dave Chappelle, all full. Because a lot of comedians who are like, uh, like Carlos Mencia came through the funny bone and just like bumped everybody and sat there and did an hour and 40 minutes or something. Right. Like, was that the what... night that you were on Clash of the Comics? No. no. It was the night that, that was I was on did Clash they still, of the Comics. Did they just, did the Clash of the Comics not happen then? 
Well, I don't know. It did. He didn't bump everybody, but uh, Richard, other Richard, local, he? yeah, local comedian Richard Reese was supposed to be our headliner for the evening, and uh, he in fact bumped him. You know the the classic story wherein he said he was going to do ten, did an hour and a half, and all the Clash comics had to sit there and watch it because we were still waiting to find oh, out who was going to win. Man, that see that's a so, dick. So yeah. that's a huge dick like, move. This is what we're going to use my podcast for: just calling out famous yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We just we I just want to burn as many bridges as I can right, right now. <laughs> Carlos right. Mencia came to Omaha to steal new comedians' jokes and then bump them. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't feel bad talking a little shit on Carlos Mencia because uh, right. that's not even going to register from us. Like there's enough that, way more famous people talking true. shit on Carlos Mencia. No one's going to care what we say. But yeah, that's a, that <laughs> always irked me. The first uh, when I first started doing comedy in like the the mid to late '90s in Los Angeles. Like uh, it was, hard. I finally got on a new faces show at the Improv, and it was like performing at the Improv was. A, you know, I don't know if you ever watch, watch Evening at the Improv. Yeah. Like I used to watch that growing up with that brick wall, mm-hmm. and it was like a big deal to perform there. So the first night I was booked there, I was super stoked, and then Damon Wayne just showed up out of nowhere and did like so much fucking time that my whole the whole new faces show got canceled. Wow. And I was I was excited though because I loved In Living Color and I was like it's fucking David Wade this is yeah. awesome you know I wasn't even that bummed out and then I got booked uh, the next month for the next New Faces show uh, same thing David Wayne shows up out of nowhere bumps the entire New Faces show it doesn't just uh, just a bunch of jerking off on stage you could tell like he was fucking pissed off about his wife. <laughs> Something going on. I think he was going through a divorce at the time, and he was just bitching about it. But there was really no jokes. It was just him, like fucking, and bumping an entire new, like all these new comics. Like, to be fuck fair, you, new comics. <laughs> to be fair, I've done that on stage. I just didn't have the power to bump anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone on stage and just complained for tw- for ten minutes. Oh, not well, that's 20, fine. But... No, I'm, yeah. that's fine. You know, but yeah. it's th- 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 this isn't an open mic, dude. This is right. the improv, like. <laughs> Or like, if you want to try out shit, do like what Dave Chappelle does, mm-hmm. and like you know, go up at the end and you have car, you can do whatever. However, there's nobody else behind you, or just try out like ten, fifteen minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what's really strange to me about that scenario is that like, is Damon Wayans that famous? At like, that time, oh, he yeah. was. Yeah. Oh, okay. At that time, maybe Damon Wayans it- was like, I be- I people forget like how big. Damon Wayne's got coming off in Living Color. Like, in Living Color was the star maker for a short period of time. Right. Like, Jim Carrey came away from that. Jamie Foxx. Yeah. Like, it made Tommy Davidson a star for right. a short period of time. David uh, Allen Greer still works. Yeah, David Allen Greer. Dave, I would say David Allen Greer is still a star. Uh, I love that show, too. I loved it in Living Color. I thought it was hilarious. Oh, yeah. I'm sure, yeah. like, if Damon Wayne's. He could still do that. And Damon Wayne's was the star you of think, that show. You don't think Damon Wayne's could just show up and be like, I'm going to do. Hey, can I, can I do some time? And I they're th- gonna let him do as much time oh, as he wants to. I suppose he could. I just think like at that point, if he's if it's really like that poorly thought out, like is the audience like you get a lot of leeway if you're famous. But at that point, if he's really just going up and complaining with no jokes for an hour, isn't the audience gonna actually be upset that they didn't get the show yeah. they were supposed to get? Yeah, like isn't that a bad business model? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> it it it, it, okay. it is, but it doesn't stop people from doing things like that. I mean, yeah. you, you, I've seen bands do that too. I've seen bands like take just take a night and not play any of their set, but just try jamming out new material because it was a Wednesday and they were in a town they didn't give a shit about. Yeah, like you know, I I've that's s- all you know, you're gonna try out stuff, but I still it's like ten, fifteen minutes, you know, like, right? Don't like make the whole night about you when you weren't even. I'm, if I ever get famous, I'm yeah. going to ruin everyone's life. I'm, in fairness, you're not like, famous I know that about your, myself. You're not famous now and you ruin everybody's <laughs> good time. Yeah, it's, it, it's good to have goals, Doherty. <laughs> All right. That's a good place to stop and take a quick break. All right. And we're back. So what we're going to do now we're is... back! Boom! <laughs> Sound effects. Probably. Do I have a... Okay, that's oh, <laughs> that came ready. That came, that came preloaded with this uh, <laughs> with, with DJ Sampler, which I downloaded <laughs> to play drop. So uh, we're gonna debut a new segment today: Will Doherty's Slop Forty. It's Will Doherty's Slop 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 Forty. That's the 
person I am. The views and opinions expressed by Will Doherty do not necessarily reflect those of the Jimmy Curve podcast. I really appreciate the fact that you feel like you have to distance yourself from anything I might say. <laughs> totally. Immediately. I- I- instant. Pre- pre-distancing. <laughs> pre-distancing. That is a good term. This segment is called Slop 40 because it's about shitty songs that I have to hear on the radio all the time because as we've established in previous episodes, uh, I deliver pizzas for a living until the sponsorship money starts rolling in from the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, which means that I'm exposed to like shitty Top 40 radio all the time and I actually like know the words to horrible songs and I don't want to. And now I'm going to punish you all by knowing them too. <laughs> is basically what's going to happen. You're going to you're going to punish us by infecting us with the knowledge of the lyrics of top forty songs. Correct. Now why can't you turn the station in the car? <laughs> I mean, I could, but then I'd have to listen to some other shitty radio station. <laughs> and classic rock will hold out for a while, but even that gets a mm-hmm. little bit lame after will, a while. Will never gets tired of punishing himself. Like yeah. that's, you have to, you have to understand. Like some of you out there may think you hate yourselves, but this is Will Doherty we're like, talking. Like, like just turning to KFRX just to be like pissed off. Oh God, why do I have this on? I hate this. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but I'm a comedian all the time. Is, is, there, a C- <laughs> is there a CD player in the car? Um, There is a cassette player in the oh, car. Jeez, <laughs> geez, geez, Brad, what are you in the 1%? <laughs> Sorry, I'm channeling Will here. <laughs> Mr. My Fancy. car has a CD and a cassette. <laughs> is it, so be, be careful, Brad. Will thinks that just because you own a forty foot yacht, that you're a rich guy. So don't, don't go dropping that on him. All right, what do you got for us, Will? The first song that I'm mad about is called "All About That Bass." Perhaps you've yep. heard this one. It's the current number one, according to uh, the guy who uh, hosts uh, American Idol. Ryan Seacrest. Yeah, See, I, it, this is this is going to be an odd segment for me because I've literally never heard of that song. Like, all I, about I don't that know bass. About, about that bass. No treble. All about that bass. That is correct. <laughs> that is the song, and that is the first thing that I have a real problem with. Because first of all, it's not even a bass-heavy song. No, Why? It's, it's about her, her ass, her like she's. She's like singing about her being kind of a voluptuous. She, like she has, right like now. she has a solid bass. Like and have you good... seen her? She's not fat. She's not like any what you would say as obese or no. fat or heavy at all. That's no. a shitty image. If you're gonna, <laughs> if you're listening to this segment on your computer at home right now, go to the YouTube's, pull up the video for all about that bass. Watch it right now. There's no fat women in this video. Not one. She might be just talking about having a good, solid base, like when you're going up for a rebound or <laughs> setting the edge against a pass rusher. Or she, yeah, she's or she's just really stable in her right. life at this point. Feet shoulder width mm. apart. You know her balance under her, like a good base, no treble. <laughs> which in this analogy would be, I don't know, boobs. I don't know. See, that, that one doesn't bother me that bad because she's kind of adorable and uh, she seems pretty real. She is kind of adorable. No one's arguing that. Right. But what I'm saying is, like, I feel like this is a, actually, like, a really bad girl power anthem song. It, you're right. It is. Like, it's a it, terrible girl power. It's a skinny bitches. She's just like, so why are you skinny shaming then, fat ass? You know? <laughs> I mean, she's not she's fat. She's not fat. I know. I'm if saying. she was fat, I would be okay with it. But <laughs> just the fact that you care about this chick, I've never heard of. But I, I know what song you're talking about. Yeah. But I'm, I'm yeah. just like, uh, I mean, really, Will, you're all about that bass <laughs> more than this chick. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I, I think you'll find if you look a little more closely, I have no ass. You're well, like, there's not there's some backside to. there, but like, it's <laughs> all in the front. Anyway, <laughs> front butt. Let's get let's get let's get let's get into this song. Let's dive in. Yeah, we're gonna get into some lyrics here. This is why this is a bullshit girl power song. Okay, it's supposed to be like empowering and like oh you know we don't need to hold ourselves to the standard of beauty in the magazines. This is okay after like the first um, chorus. This is the first verse of the song. Yeah, it's pretty clear. I ain't no size two, but I can shake it, shake it like I'm supposed to do. 
in order for me to be an object of the male gaze. <laughs> <laughs> that last part's not in there. No, that last part's <laughs> just implied by the song. Well, it was also that the be be funny. It was also you the said best that, lyric. Like, we're super looked at, the, looked at the camera super seriously. <laughs> yeah, it was, remix. That last line was also the best lyric of anything you read. Yeah. I'm, I'm, super Correct. I'm annoyed it's not in the song. <laughs> well, that's yeah, but that's what it's saying. Like, this is such a weird fake feminist thing because it's saying like, oh, we don't need to hold ourselves to that standard of beauty. It's just we still need to hold ourselves to a rigorous standard of beauty for <laughs> men, but men actually like fat, like people with a little bit of old uh, plumpiness on their butts. Isn't I think it that said meat on the bones? A little more meat on the bones sounds better than <laughs> I plumpiness like the way on the butts. I said it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you're beautiful, baby. I like you because you got a little like plump on the butt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's uh, I. Are you, have you been reading my diary? That's my pickup line. Like, a like woman who also would not like to be say, told she has a lot of meat on the bone either. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of bones, yeah. like, <laughs> it goes back to like it's like I see these. I've seen like these meme pictures pop up on Facebook. Like there are people just being mad at something that they're imagining because it isn't real. Like, like it's a picture of like Marilyn Monroe and like some random Hollywood whore who's just like, like a wet bathing suit weighing down a sack of bones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or like, I, when they, like what, I, I haven't or, seen this. Uh, that's um, that's picture. turning me on a little bit. Okay. I, well, it's always say, yeah. When did this? And it's like a picture of Marilyn, or it's like a picture of you know some oh, like way too skinny see. girl. When did this become sexier than this? And it's like Marilyn Monroe being all curvy and busty. Mm-hmm. And the answer to that question is never. It <laughs> never <laughs> happened. You're mad about something fake. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's just, it's like the same thing. It, it's the lyric in this song that goes Sarah. like. This is the most exercise I've gotten this week. <laughs> I see the magazine work in that Photoshop. We know that shit ain't real. Come on now, make it stop. If you got beauty, beauty. Just raise them up, because every inch of you is perfect, <laughs> from the bottom <laughs> to the top. I don't like the word beauty being used twice just to fill time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, find like, that la- that's lazy writing. <laughs> you would never catch Edgar Allan Poe doing that. <laughs> <laughs> what's la- no, what's lazy about it is that like you're not perfect. Nobody is perfect. That's not what you should be striving what? for. What's that whole like the whole. <laughs> I- that's true. <laughs> Get proud of who you are. Love who you are. Like that bullshit. Right. Unless you're skinny, <laughs> in which case, fuck all those skinny bitches. Well, here's the thing. Right, right? which is, doesn't make any sense. That, yeah. so love how you look, uh, as long as you're like, considered overweight. If you're not, <laughs> yeah. you fuck you. <laughs> it's, it's like, it, but it's weird. It's even weirdly passive aggressive in the song. Like here, it's, there's a line where it says skinny bitches. It says, I'm bringing booty back. Go ahead and tell them skinny bitches that. The net, but the very next excuse me, line is excuse me, skinny bitches. Uh, yeah, this she's bringing booty back. It's kind what, of a, it's kind of a play just, on that. Bring just sexy so everybody back, knows you know, too. That song that what came is out this? Like ten years ago. <laughs> but. I'm 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 being image searching this chick. What's her name? Uh, her name is uh, Megan Trainor. I put too much emphasis on the last uh, syllable, but it was so Megan you would know. Trainor. It was spelled. <laughs> Me- are you sure it's not the French pronunciation of Trainois? <laughs> is it Megan? Is it Mihan Trainois? Okay, there we go. So this is. Uh, yeah, she just looks like a normal person. I don't exactly. Know. Yeah. And, and that apparently is Horatio Sands, and some, <laughs> who for some reason came up. No, that's the only fat person in the video. Is a very delightful. No, no, that's I'm going to say he's gay like, man. He's a vine. Celebrity, that guy. Yeah, he just dances like like that. You know. Cool. There, I, I don't. I'm uncomfortable Isn't with the cool? idea of Vine celebrities. Cool? <laughs> I don't. It's not cool. All right. I'm All uncomfortable right. with the fact that I'm not a Vine celebrity. <laughs> Other than that, it's dumb. You're not. But his Vine yeah. is like a really cool app. Do you guys use it? No. But it's been. It's just been overtaken by teenagers. Like everything that's popular on there is like like whatever like cute sixteen year old boys do that all these sixteen year old. But isn't girls that true love. of most culture? I guess so. Was it always like that? No, that's I why mean, I like sports. Like sports is always going to be the realm of adult men. Yeah. Like 
Kids will never influence sports or they're like how it's marketed. Yeah, they're even taking over ISIS. But you look it's at like crazy. old, old. <laughs> if you want, look at old Hollywood, like a lot of the people like like became famous in their like mid to late thirties. A lot of them, yeah, you know, a lot true. of them were bleeding men in their forties and fifties. Like Humphrey Bogart was old as shit. Like, well, how old was John Hamm when he, when he got famous? For example, like, right? He was like almost forty. Yeah, yeah. The next line after. <laughs> Uh, go ahead and tell them. S- I'm bringing booty back. Go ahead and tell them skinny bitches that. <laughs> right. No, I'm just playing. I know you think you're fat. Did, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> I, I I need to I need to bring up a, a very very important point here. Sir Mixalot brought booty back yeah. a long time ago. What about that Nicki Minaj song? That that is my me. anaconda. Du- my anaconda. Du- my anaconda. Du- that shut up. Stop first of it. all, first of all, that is a Sir Mix a Lot right, song. You have your, your <laughs> Sir Mix a Lot record is skipping. Stop yeah. doing that. Yeah. How creative! Right. I watched that whole video. Though. Anaconda <laughs> is the subject of our second song in this segment. <laughs> uh, Anaconda by Nicki Minaj. Which, as oh, far cool. as I Good. can well, tell, you're welcome for the segue. <laughs> <laughs> now, as far as I can tell, I don't want to step on your bit, Will, but this is a song about. How it's great to sleep with drug dealers for drugs? Correct. That, <laughs> I, I think that's what the song's about, right? Also, the other guy, uh, like I, I think, yeah, because this is another Correct. one of those. This is another one of those girl power <laughs> anthems, except that the first verse is about uh, fucking a guy because he has a lot of money, and the second verse is and, about and drugs. The second <laughs> verse is about fucking a guy who has a big dick and a lot of drugs. I th- Does it say that? Well, let's get into some lyrics here. <laughs> all I know is that my anaconda don't, and there was asses everywhere. I, I wanna, watched the video. I want to. I want to. I want to bring up another quick point, really quick. At what point did producers in like hip hop and pop stop trying to hide the fact that they were just playing another song and singing over it? Like that's mm-hmm. just "Baby Got Back." There's nothing else in that song musically other than it's just the sir mix a lot song like that the 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 one um oh god what's his name his dad was on growing pains uh, robin thick robin thick well, that's yeah. that, that's another song that's like there's nothing there's no music in that song that's not just the original song that's why the sample sued. the sample is just they didn't add anything to it or like create anything at all is that always i'm happened? pretty sure robin thick added hashtags to that song. Is, is, <laughs> has that always happened, or am I just now noticing it? I feel like in the late 90s and early 2000s, I mean, people weren't just singing over another song. They would take samples, chop it up, and then add stuff. But that, that, people getting lazy with that shit. That Nicki Minaj, they're actually like using that song that is Robin Thicke I, isn't. That, 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 isn't it just uh, My Anaconda Donor is the whole thing that... The I music thought was, I is thought just it was just the like that part. No, the 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 whole song is just it's "Baby Got Back." But that's "Baby Got Back." <laughs> but they paid for that. Oh my God, Robin Thicke didn't pay for any of that music right. because it, it it technically was original in the sense that they created it. And then Marvin Gaye's family estate is suing over all the money they made. Off they that should song. because he just they're just playing his song. I'm, I'm not down with that. I'm, what song was it that it, they said he? Lifted. I wanted to say it, but I'm, I'm, I'm blanking out on it right now. Uh, I'll, look it, I'll look it Blurred up. While, I'll look it up while Will gets into some lyrics. Blurred lines. Yeah. Now, the original. I, I believe uh, there was a point of contention about whether or not it explicitly said it was about fucking somebody with a big dick who had drugs. Uh, and the answer very is contentious. Very. <laughs> the answer is it was very explicitly about that. Um, I'm going to read this. I think I should read this like it's like I'm at a slam poetry meeting. <laughs> like, anytime you take pop music out of, like, the music out of <laughs> pop music, it becomes the worst poetry in the world anytime. <laughs> Correct. This dude named Michael used to ride motorcycles. Genius. Dick bigger than a tower. I ain't talking about Eiffel. She ain't. Is this your slam poetry? Real country <laughs> ass nigga let me play with his rifle. Pussy put his ass to sleep. Now he calling me NyQuil. <laughs> now that bang, bang, bang. I let him hit it because he slang cocaine. First of all, those aren't sentences. <laughs> <laughs> he tossed my salad like his name, Romaine. <laughs> <laughs> and when we done, I make him buy me Balmain. I'm on some dumb shit. 
Yes, that's the only true thing she said. <laughs> <laughs> they tossed my salad like I was Romaine. <laughs> yeah, like oh like his God. name Romaine. Now that my so friends like is music. Romaine. This song is so unpleasantly sexual, it made me realize that I'm the old man finding children's music <laughs> uncomfortably sexual. Right. If you haven't seen the video for this song, watch the video for this song. It's the most pornographic yeah. thing on the internet. Have you seen the, the one where, don't, don't watch it where the guys have dubbed fart sounds over it? No. That's the best. Because the whole... Video is just them shaking their asses like right in front of the camera, like crazy in different oh. poses with their legs up and down and split. I gotta see this video, and, and, but you gotta see the <laughs> fart one. <laughs> if it was just that, if it was just that, I wouldn't be that impressed with like how filthy it is. It's that, but it's also like her spraying like white whipped toppings on her tits. And like what, in an appro- what part did you not like about that? I think she's gross. I think she's <laughs> sexy. I find really? I don't I just find her to be cartoonish. I find and therefore not erotic. I find her off putting. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. Ryan Dowd has something he wants to say about that. I'm really white. <laughs> <laughs> we had to Here's- find a reason to play that. I did. I did. Here's what I find off-putting <laughs> about that. It's not that I didn't jerk off to it, because I did. <laughs> but it's the fact that, like, I understand that music videos were always about, like, <laughs> sexy teens, like, showing their nips. I understand that. That's marketing. But I jerked off with a look of disgust on my face. <laughs> uh, is there another way? Which is actually my jerk off. Is there, yeah, I don't, if, if there's another way, I don't want to know it. <laughs> and they're like, excuse me, sir, are you actually going to buy this TV? or what <laughs> <laughs> not to be confused with my shame and disgusted face at, after I come mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel like they've changed the f- degree of like sexuality to the point that it's not reflecting like something that's supposed to be titillating it's pretend it's literally like creating its imagery to pretend to be pornography well like I'm horrified oh, yeah, you about said, you just said tit about ten, about <laughs> 10 years ago, if you guys have never seen this video, you, you got to watch it. it was, this was about 10 years ago. I was in a bar, and a video called Who's Your Daddy by Benny Benassi played. Have you seen this? Uh-uh. It, it is the most <laughs> pornographic thing I've really? ever seen, and it's just a video. It's like... It's just like women like licking whipped cream off of things is most of the video. And it's just <laughs> the music is just a porn soundtrack with that over it. But it was a I mean, it was like a club hit for a short period of time. What is, th- what is that? The Nicki Minaj video farts. over with farts. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta li- <laughs> this, uh, this is bad pod. <laughs> there is a uh, I, 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 there's a uh, I don't. I don't care. Ramstein. Stop, <laughs> stop it. I'm cutting your mic. <laughs> is it Ramstein? Yeah, Ra- Ramstein. Ramstein? Yeah, they, I, they have little, a music video host, where, where the chick's that, mess. They actually, there's a chick getting railed. <laughs> really? In the music video, yeah. Yeah, I Crazy have Germans. not seen that. That's. Yeah. I don't, well, there I don't you think go. You played it on TV or anything. I think that band needs a first name Carl Ramstein. <laughs> Or something. Dirty law. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Edgar Ramstein. It would be, yeah. But I, I think we're just at the point where, like, you everybody's trying to outdo each other. We've done it since, you know, things, have, like, especially music videos and things like that were real sexy. Like, pour some sugar on me, that, that video. And that wasn't that very, that wasn't that sexy. That for video. at the time? It was just Joe Elliott and the band on stage playing. Pour some sugar on me? Or what, what music video? Definitely. You might the one where that chick. You're thinking of Cherry, Cherry Pie. Pie. Cherry Pie. Pie. That's what Jeez, I was thinking. Of. Man, that was by yeah. Warrant. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, that's by Warrant. But like now, that that was in the 80s. Yeah. Mm. And it's 2014, and it's just like, but, but we, it, we've been building on top of building like sex. Everybody's trying to out sex each other. You, yeah. You're you're right though. It did it did take a turn. Like I think Will has a point that like a- Anaconda by Nicki Minaj is so ridiculously over the top. Yeah. Well, and what I think has happened that is so scary to me is the fact that, like, 
we have the first generation who's been raised with the internet their whole lives. And so now we're That's like, why oh, they're horrible. we're making music <laughs> videos for people who've been watching sex on the internet literally since they were seven. And they're, like, that's right. the iconography that yeah. we're creating. Like, our sexy music videos aren't about, like, you know, we're faking since they naked. Were seven, though, seven, really? Like, you think a seven year old's typing in you porn? They don't have to <laughs> type it in. <laughs> I I, I want to see the new celebrity pics. I'm actually more <laughs> tapity tap tap tap. The th- I'm more bothered by music. I've o- I'm always shocked by. Occasionally, a, a song will come out and it'll just be a hit, uh, and I'm so confused as to why no one else sees just how terrible of a song it is. Like there was a top forty hit, uh, and it was a song by a guy named Jimmy Ray, and the song was "Are You Jimmy Ray?" It's the worst song I've ever seen. <laughs> It's, a, it's the worst song I've ever seen. The chorus was, uh... Are you Jimmy Ray? Yeah, it, 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 yeah, it was. It was, are you Stingray? Who wants are, to know? Yeah, you know the song I'm talking about. Of course. Yeah, it was, a, it was the worst song ever recorded. It was a big hit. Like, the fucking Iggy Azalea song is that for me. Like, that's that's the dumbest... Like, you do a bit about that yeah, on stage, it's, Brad. It's uh, catchy. I get why people like it, but it's just like... Sort of, but like, there's the no irony music of her coming there. out this... Blue-eyed, blonde-haired Australian girl. Oh, she moved to the states when she I'm was sixteen. Really white. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, and the first line is like, "On first things first, I'm the realist." Yeah, you're, it's so. Funny. You're the realist. It makes me. I, you couldn't. You actually couldn't be more fake. Right. <laughs> it's the definition of poser. Yeah. Like you're 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 very directly copying something that is not you. Right. Pre- yeah. Presenting it to us as. You, ever, you I, ever hear that song? What does the fox say? Yes, everybody has. Yeah. Now, is that a horrible How, song, or is that... That's s- a piece of comedy. I that's don't a know different why, thing. Huh? But but it's not funny at yeah, all. I wouldn't say it's funny either. What does the... Fu- <laughs> the fuck <laughs> <fu- laughs> does <this laughs> to make that noise? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah. kids loved it. It swept oh, like... Oh, yeah. They, I, 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 that's I do, a different category, though. Like That's like Gangnam Style or whatever. That's a shitty song. It's a stupid song. Yeah. But it's ca- it's just a catchy internet meme. Like That's not... I say Gangnam, Gangnam Style was the is the Macarena, the new Macarena. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I I was annoyed by that one too. What annoyed me about Gangnam Style is when people kept calling that dude a rapper. Yeah, I was like, wait, he doesn't. Psy. Yeah, like he would be introduced in public places as famous rapper Psy, and I was like, he's never like rapped or sang. I, I can't figure out what Pitbull does either. Like what is Pitbull? Bring that partner ran and ran. Other than that, it's going down. I don't down. know what that guy does. I don't know why he's and famous. Then that, it's going down. Does he? I, is he? <laughs> I'm so he's annoyed. Fr- uh, he's from Miami. That's what he. <laughs> oh! That's what he does. All right. And he wears uh, tailored suits. Yeah. Well, Pitbull's got one up on Jimmy Putnam. Then <laughs> I guess he. I guess he wins. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this has been Will Doherty's Slop Forty. Uh, can we wrap it up there? Was there another one? Did you have a big closer? <laughs> I I want to say one thing about the two songs we talked about. Uh, I think that at first, like Anaconda, at first I thought that it was like a better girl power anthem because at least there was a degree of like genuine honesty within that. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to fuck guys with big dicks who have drugs and then they're going to buy me stuff. And it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, but, but, but which, by the way, is the reason to have a big dick in drugs. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. But, you know. Uh, if I had a big dick in drugs, I'd fuck Nicki Minaj. Sure. Why not? <laughs> right. Okay. But at the end of the song, just literally, just like in Megan Trainor's song, <laughs> Megan <laughs> Trainor's <laughs> she goes off for like. 40 seconds just yelling, fuck them skinny bitches. She does, yeah. And, Why? And, and she shouts out to where my fat ass bitch is at. Yeah. <laughs> Nicki Minaj, like, a Hates skinny... Hates women. Being skinny is act like you could starve to death and become skinny. Like, her body type of being skinny and having huge tits and a huge ass is more impossible than being skinny. Right. You can't just <laughs> yell at people for being skinny. <laughs> right. You have a more unrealistic standard of beauty. Well, that's why I find her cartoonish. She just doesn't look like a real person to me. She is cartoonish, totally. With the fucked up hair. Like, Always changing weird. her hair. and she's Yeah, she's like, uh, like a, one of those 
like dolls, so those like real life dolls. Real <laughs> dolls. <laughs> yeah, real dolls. I mean, I've heard they're called Lars real and the doll. Real Girl. Have you seen yeah. that movie? No, I've heard oh, it's great. Yeah. It's a really good movie. It's a good movie. <laughs> All right, cool. Ooh, we jump from, from that to Lars and the Real Girl. <laughs> no, that's a good, yeah. Nicki Minaj, Lars and the Real Girl, <laughs> and uh, now we're gonna do one news story. We got we got time. It's we're at the fifty minute mark. Let's do a quick news story and talk about it, and then we'll bring it home. So I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna play Josh's news drop. Joshua, here. Joshua, Joshua Bossler news. Hello, everybody. Jimmy, your politics. Stink. <laughs> but I might kind of like that. A recent study at Brown University showed that people that are uh, people that are attracted to the body over odor of other people with similar political views. Um, you reek your political affiliation. <laughs> that, according to this study, that will never make a difference in anything. <laughs> <laughs> Where was this study? I'm Brown really? University. Mm. Uh, you say it'll never make a difference. I'm pretty sure Match. dot com just added three new criteria. <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah. Well, this is a, it is an interesting one because Josh, you are a card carrying libertarian. I am. Is your wife? No, Do you really have that card? Do you have a card, a libertarian card in your pocket? I have my voter registration <laughs> card that says libertarian <laughs> on it. <laughs> so yes, so yeah. yes, you yes, do. I do. Right. Yeah, um, my wife is not political at all. Yeah, have you? F- ha- neither am I. I'd like to meet her. Maybe that's what I'm attracted <laughs> to, though. Right. Yeah. You know, you could just be, she could just be all right, whatever you said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or she just like I, I just don't like. Oh, you're, you sound well informed. To fine, I'll go with what you just <laughs> yeah, said. You're like, I, I would, like your politics. Marry of me. No politics. Please marry me. I like your politics of just listening to my politics. That's my <laughs> favorite type of politics. I would say that my wife and I have the same politics and have since we met. So I, plausible. I don't know. Will, where are you at? Where's Serenity politically? Oh, They're, I had to fix her. Dudes are married. <laughs> You had to fix her? <laughs> In fairness, uh, we went to a Catholic high school together. Ugh. And at the time, she was still really clinging on to that sense of identity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you could just have anal sex? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> that's, <laughs> well, that's that's religious, which is different. I was right, Same pheromone, it, I guess. It, I don't it know. kind of mm, it uh, definitely maybe. informs the political viewpoints. Yeah, it does. That's true. I guess it does. You know, uh, well, I we, I don't want to get into uh, my wife's religious and political beliefs, but I would say that we're we're pretty close right now on both fronts. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Like, if you can, if, if if this is a pheromone thing, right? Like, this is not a like an odor that you can detect. It wasn't even that. Sci- it's hippies stink. It wasn't even like that scientific <laughs> where they found like a, a pheromone and and tested the pheromone. They just found people. Ask them what their political ideologies are, and then smell this guy. Yeah, sm- fuck him? yeah, <laughs> basically. Yeah. <laughs> that was a whole test. They asked like seven people. Yeah. Okay, they, that's a fact. Now, just put that out there. Yeah. <laughs> well, and they they probably asked students at Brown University, which who probably are all politically identical, because yeah. if you go to Brown University, like you're a certain type of person. Yeah. Right. The type of person who didn't get into Harvard. <laughs> yeah. I, I I just, just way, I, to, way to lose the brown audience. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember this. Su- that sounded uh, like racist. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We can edit that in post. <laughs> We're not going to. I just remember this. Yeah, you're, this just gonna, yeah. you're just gonna like, take that take Browns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna edit it to make it just sound like that. The, the Cleveland Browns are gonna hate our podcast <laughs> now. This last summer, I just remember talking to Will at some point. And uh, it was a really hot day, and he smelled like he was affiliated with the Green Party. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, yeah, right. I would think that was weed. <laughs> well, I think the joke was a little more subtle than that, but you know, I, I don't know what that I means. Don't, yeah, it was just uh, sorry, it's sneeze. No, that's I a, smell like I don't you're allowed shower. To sneeze. Is what <laughs> yeah, that's what I was okay, referring to. Yeah. He smelled like shit. <laughs> <laughs> Green shit. <laughs> Apparently. That's a that's a that's a, first of all that's a new drop like a I'm gonna get is baby's shit. There's just green. something dirty about the green party. A newborn baby shit is black tar. <laughs> just absolutely. <laughs> s- that I'm how not... many diapers have you changed, Will? That's a good question. It only takes one. No. <laughs> You'll never be the same. No, I'm not. Mellow out. <laughs> that's, that's what Dusty Stell would like to say to you. 
<laughs> Sorry, <laughs> playing with my out. playing with the playing with this drop app is my favorite part yeah. of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's the fifty-five minute mark. I think um, changing diapers is a pretty good place to end. <laughs> Black tar, what did you say? Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah black tar. <laughs> the first one, like, they haven't had a chance for their digestive system to move at yeah. all. So it's literally just everything that's just been, like, meconium. biodegrading. Is meconium? Is, there's a, oh, you know the word? Yeah, because I, when I was born, I, uh, I could, like, got excited. Like, this is a thing that happens with, like, 20% of newborns. Uh, I actually got excited in the womb during childbirth and fucking shit in the womb. <laughs> <laughs> and so I inhaled my own shit, which they call meconium. Like that's what it's called. Like you know, for uh, that the does baby's sound first, nicer. Baby's first like bowel movement is called meconium because you're getting rid of all this weird shit. Yeah, out of here. I think that's but one I, of those things. So where... I don't like. They had to like fucking like. It was like an emergency thing, like clear it out of my lungs and shit. And I think that's one of those. Like, Does anybody have yeah. a Tic Tac? But that's why I, I think... always say. I always say that's why I like you know like I'm I'm kind of bitter and cynical because I came out. Of this came into this world shit eating in your shit. mouth, yeah, eating shit. <laughs> I feel like that's one of those things that, <clears throat> that when it happens, doctors tell the one weirdo that it happens to. Oh yeah, it happens like twenty percent of people, yeah. but it, it, <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it's like everybody with a third nipple will tell you that thirty three percent of the planet has a third nipple. Like I never no, met someone with they, a third nipple. Have you? What? No, no. <laughs> you said that like you had. Like, I met like three of those. <laughs> no, no. Oh, you have. <laughs> No, it was a... The podcast a, audience couldn't see me making uncomfortable eye contact with Brad <laughs> while I said that. Yeah, I was making a fictional comedic analogy. <laughs> which is going to be I the... I wish you had a drop thing for that. Fictional comedic analogy. That's gonna, well, it's going to be the title of my autobiography, so... That's <laughs> fictional comedic analogy by Jimmy Putnam. <laughs> also, my parody band that I'm going to start will be called That. So, Jimmy, I believe you were trying to end the episode? Well, I was. <laughs> Putnam? Damn near killed him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it never, what are you, some kind of comedian? It never ends with this guy. I was trying to end the episode, and now I will. Uh, this has been the Jimmy... Shut up! <laughs> God damn it. They're not going to let you do it. No. This Fair has like been dot, dot, dot. I'm trying to dot, dot, dot in the Jimmy Curve podcast. So... We'd like to thank our special guest, Brad Stewart. Yay, thanks for having me. Go to Zoolarius. It is a good show. Uh, it's a cool... It, Zoo Bar is a cool bar, and uh, consistently yeah. uh, good shows there. And you do bring in people from out of town. Yeah, to, that's what I... We love to have that, where we can have like a you know few locals, and then uh, Sundays somebody at, from out of town coming through a yeah. headline. Sundays at 8 o'clock. Yep. Uh, Zoo Bar, Brad Stewart, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks. <laughs> gentlemen. And so, for my co-hosts... Will Doherty, go to Will Doherty Loves Company and Saturday Backline, yay! And Joshua Vossler, and that's it for Joshua Vossler. I'm I don't have anything planned. How was cla <laughs> how, how was class today? <laughs> class was rough. I, don't I had have, rough, don't have rough test. Planned. Okay, yeah. rough test. All right, thank you. And I've been Jimmy Putnam. Thank you for listening, everybody. Good night. Way to lose the brown audience. <laughs>